Let us turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 19. We will read responsibly. I will start. But Saul, still uh, breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Now as he went out on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for, for behold, he is praying. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we will read chapter, uh, verse 19 together. And taking food, he was strengthened. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3 to 5. Chapter 3, 1 to 5. Uh, talk about the age of the difficulty. And if we can uh, unpack our Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5. And I'd like to read it together. And let's read in one voice. But understand this, that in the last days there will become times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving God, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God, having the appearance of the godliness, but denying its power over such people. Um, the age we are facing is developing more into uh, into how the word just proclaimed to us that we are becoming more to be the lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant just just how it's been described in the word that's what we are facing um, but verse 5 what I want to emphasize is actually verse 5 it says we still have the appearance of the godliness so although we may be the lovers of money or pride, we don't act like we are the lovers of money or arrogant. We don't act like we are against our parents. Yet, uh, as we mask ourselves, pretend ourselves as I'm a true Christian, like I'm a true worshiper. So we still go to church and we are at church. We worship God having the appearance of godliness. But what are we denying? Verse 5, it says, we are denying its power. We go to church, we deny the power of the church. We pray, we deny the power of the prayer. We do share the gospel, yet also many times we do deny the power of evangelism. Uh, we do deny the power of Trinity God. You know, in our world, we are living in the age where we try to prove 
what we learn is right. So when you graduate college, all we try to do is that what I've learned in the college, what I have learned, how I've been educated, we want to prove that what I've learned is really true and it's right and it's real in the field. So at this, after graduating college, what do we try to do? We try to find our work, find right company to work in. And then when we go in, what we do is we prove what we learn is right. And as you, as you succeed to prove what you have learned is right, it becomes yours deeper and deeper. Our success has become mine. Our strength has been proven right more and more. And at the same time, what are we denying? We're denying the power of God. We're denying the power of Christ. Um, if we look at Acts chapter 9 today, verse 1, Paul was at the church. He learned about God since he was born, but he denied the power of Jesus. He denied the presence of Jesus. So he was instead filled with, he was breathing threat, threats and he was breathing murder. And this is how people live in our society. They're with threats and murder and without love, without Christ. We're always fighting each other and conflict each other to be step on others. And we are at the church. The world, what they're going through, we know what they're going through. But the problem is Christians, us, who we truly want to want to be the person who met God, yet we say we believe in Jesus, but aren't we the one denying Jesus, right? Um, I, I met this remnant, and remnant told me after having Tarapang, um, after a week, she, uh, after like three weeks, she told me all of a sudden, um, Pastor, um, can you have Tarapang with my mom too? And I was surprised that he, her mom asked me for a tarapang because I know her mom is not really interested in the gospel. So I asked, what did you say to your mom that she wanted to have tarapang with you? And she says, she said to her mom, 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 when I have tarapang, it really gives me peace. It gives me comfort. And it's really good. So mom, do you want to have it with pastor? And mom asked me, can I please have it with you too? So I started tarapang with her. After hearing what the daughter said to mom, this is what I realized. Gospel is real. That gives true peace. Gospel is real. That gives you true, true strength. Gospel is real. That gives you true comfort. Gospel is real. Destroying the work of Satan. When I first met her, she told me she's suffering sleep paralysis. And I told her the answer to Jesus Christ. And I could see in her faith, face that she, she disregards whatever I, I'm, about, I'm talking to her. The next week I met her, I asked her, did you have another sleep paralysis? She said, yes. That's when I told her. I asked her, is sleep paralysis real to you or is it fake? And she said, it's real. Really, when I woke up, I can move my body, a bear in my room, pounding upon my body that I'm suffering. She said, it's real. And I told her, just like what you suffer is real, Jesus is real. Christ is real. If you're concerned what you're going through is real, you need to hold on to the real answer, which is living and active, which is Christ. So I asked her, I don't really mind that you suffer sleep paralysis thousand times or billion times, but if you can focus, if you can confess the real answer in your life, you will be free. The next week I met, since the next week I met, she started to bring her friend, Russian friend, Spanish friends. Now she brought her mom. And as I see her, this is what I'm realizing. Gospel is real. Christ is real. If God is living in you, they see through you. Because gospel is real. Because this is power. The gospel that Jesus we believe, many times we consider him sleeping. We consider him dead. If you look at Matthew chapter 28, 
Although regardless of how many times Jesus told his disciples, I will be alive and I will resurrect, people still went to the tomb and they were looking for the dead Jesus. And this Jesus is not dead anymore. An angel came to Mary, told her, Jesus is not here anymore. She went into the tomb. There was no Jesus. It was real. Jesus was not anymore in the tomb. She went to Galilee. Jesus appeared to her. She, Jesus told her, do not be troubled. I'm Jesus. She met the real Jesus. And Jesus told her to go around and tell people, I'm, I'm alive. I'm here again. Jesus came to disciples, and disciples met living Jesus. Not the Jesus who's dead in the tomb, but the Jesus who overcame the power of death, overcame the power of Christ. They met Jesus, and they started to proclaim Jesus to others. Jesus is living. And is your Jesus sleeping in your heart? Or is your Jesus dead? Today I really pray, let my Jesus live again. Let him not stay in tomb anymore, being powerlessness. But let him be powerful Christ who has triumphed everything. And we are the children of living God. We are the children of Jesus who is living in us. This is what we believe. We don't believe in fake knowledge. We don't believe in fake ideology. We believe in, in living Jesus. My Jesus and my knowledge of Jesus is higher and above than any other science. This is greater than all. And this is greatest above every other name. They will all bow before this name of Jesus that we believe. My Jesus is living and active. And can you ask each other next to you, is your Jesus sleeping or living? And can you please answer each other, he's living in my heart. Messiah is prophesied. In the time of difficulties, in the time of suffering and pain, Messiah is prophesied to us. His birth is already prophesied. Isaiah chapter 7, 14 claims that the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 it says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Messiah is prophesied. Not only his birth, his ministry is prophesied. Isaiah chapter 61, 1 to 3. Bible tells us, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance, vengeance of our God of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of the gladness instead of mourning the garments, uh, mourning the garments of praise instead of faint spirit, that they may be called ox of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he may be glorified. As Messiah prophesied, your Messiah. This is what I want to ask today. Is Jesus, is Messiah written in the Old Testament? Is it Jesus living in me today? Not only his ministry, his suffering and death is proclaimed and prophesied. Isaiah 53, 4 to 6. 
The Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a ch chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. His death and suffering is prophesied. Is this prophesied Messiah yours? Isaiah chapter 53, 9 to 10, his death is also prophesied. The Bible says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul make an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Again prophesied, is this Messiah your Jesus? His resurrection is also prophesied. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 16, uh, verse 19. Bible tells us, Your dead shall live, their bodies shall arise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy, for your dew is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Jesus is prophesied. Messiah is prophesied. Why am I sharing this? This was the knowledge of the Paul. He knew the Old Testament from the Genesis to the end. But what did he, why did he kill all the believers who believe in Christ? Because this Messiah was not his Jesus. This is what's happening to our lives. Many times we go to church not believing in this Messiah is my Jesus. We are disregarding the power of Jesus in many times. Uh, I prepare a video for you guys to watch. So we'll, have, we'll watch a video for about a minute. <laughs> Why am I showing this video? When Paul unpacked the mystery of the gospel Messiah into his life, he's more excited than this. Having a card in your hand. All right. Jason, you get Jesus. He's like, mm. <laughs> this is right. Sam, you get Jesus. He doesn't care. Who, who the heck is Jesus? All right. How, why are they so happy and surprised having a car in their hand? They know the value of it. Right? When Paul, when this Messiah was unpacked to Paul as Jesus, he realized what's hidden in the mystery of the gospel. It's more than having a car, more than gaining any other knowledge. He was very excited, surprised. This Jesus that I try to kill all the time realized he's the one that's been prophesied, not only in Isaiah, but throughout the Old Testament. I've been waiting for this Messiah. Wow, this was Jesus. Now he, Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? Are you the Messiah that I've been waiting? Are you the Messiah that our people were waiting? And Jesus saying, this is who I am. I am that Messiah that you've been waiting for. Guess what he felt? He's been destroyed. All the Christians and believers. Because they believe in Jesus. But now he realized this Messiah is Jesus. When we unpack this written Jesus into my life. When this written Jesus becomes living Jesus in my life. When it becomes 
my Jesus said, my gospel. When this written king becomes my king, I believe he destroyed the work of the devil. When I met mom this Wednesday, I asked her. She said she's been to church for lives. I asked her, do you want to accept this Jesus in your heart? She said, I want to accept this Jesus into my heart. When this Jesus become my Jesus, not someone else's, but mine, not just limited into this written word, but if this Jesus written in an ink becomes living in my life, he becomes my king, that's when he destroyed the work of the devil. Amen. He's my king. When he becomes my true priest, accepting the power of the priest, accepting the living power of Jesus into my heart, he says there's no condemnation, set you free from sin and death. That he became, he became ransom for me. When he becomes ransom for my life, I am away from work of Satan. I am away from curses. I am away from all the problems, difficulties. But I become a child of God. The power is lying in the name of Jesus. And when this Jesus becomes mine, my life can be changed. It's impossible to change my life. It's impossible to help myself, but Jesus can. When he becomes my Jesus, when he becomes my Christ, if he is my prophet, I will not be lost because he's my way. I will not be in fear because he's my life. I'll not be confused because he's my truth. If Jesus, Jesus it's my Jesus. My life is changing. This is why wherever we go, whatever we do, we are sharing this Jesus to others' life. And Paul confessed in Romans chapter 1, 16 to 17. He confessed, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God. For salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew and to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. When this Jesus becomes my Jesus, we're not ashamed of him anymore. But what we share is we share the power of Christ. So he urged his disciple Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2.1. He told Timothy, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He's giving his disciples, he's giving his child, he's giving his money to the grace that is in Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 6.10, he's urging the members of the church, finally, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I know many times we disregard the power of Jesus, but power of Jesus literally make us the child of God. Without the power of Jesus, without the living power of Jesus, we cannot be a child of God. But by His grace, by His blood, when we accept Jesus into our hearts, we are finally, we become a child, a precious child of God. The John chapter 1, 12 confessed, Yet to all who receive those who believe in his name have right to become a child of God. Unless we are alienated away from God. While we were praising, my daughter came to me all of a sudden with her shoes on her hand. And she raised her feet to me. Literally, she's telling me, Dad, please wear me my shoe. There was no question that I asked. I just do it. Because she's my daughter. And I was thinking, what if Boyong all of a sudden come, came to me, raise your feet, and Pastor, can you tie my shoe? I'll, be, I'll call Sangwoo. Sangwoo, Boyong, Boyong has some problem. Sangwoo can come and say, Pastor, now I feel more closer to you. And he can raise his feet and say, 
Man, I'll, I'll, I'll tell my pastor, Pastor Shin, Pastor Shin is having me some special prayer. Why? Because they're not my people. They're not my kids. But for my kids, I would not only tie her shoe, I even massage my daughter's feet, which I'm not going to, I will never do for Sam. I will never do for Crystal. <laughs> Definitely Brian's feet, oh, I don't think you. Josiah, it smells so bad. But my daughter, I will do it. We became a child of God by this living power of Jesus. You can raise your feet to Jesus and God. And guess, and call him, guess what he will do for you. We believe in this living Jesus and living power of Jesus. And this living God. Is he living in you? Is he power in your life? Is your worry fake? Is your anxiety fake? Is your fear fake? Or are they all real? Are you anxious? Are you faking yourself that you're anxious? Isn't that real? If that's real, I want to tell you. Christ is real to you. Jesus is real to us. After Paul met Jesus, his message changed. Acts chapter 9, 19 to 23. This is what Paul went into synagogue and confessed. Paul 22, but Paul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jew who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. He's now proving my Jesus that I met is Christ that we were waiting for. This Jesus is a Christ that we proclaim is the answer to all. Regardless of the lifestyle that you're living in, regardless of the situation you're living in, Jesus is a Christ and He is the answer to everything that you're going through. What did He confess in Acts chapter 17, 3? Paul confessed, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. The message of evangelism, very simple. Jesus is the Christ. And we wonder if we talk about this thousand times, aren't people going to be bored? No. That's what they wanted to be reminded. That's what they want to hear from you. They want to hear Jesus is the Christ in their lives. In every second, they want you to be there to confess Jesus is the Christ to their lives. Why are we facing those who are going through sufferings right now? Why do we see those who are lacking? They're there to listen to you the one message. Jesus is the Christ. And his answer to all. Um, there was a book that says, in order for a leader to lead a group of people, the leader should repeat the same sentence and same word at least 80 times to lead a group of people. And it's been studied for you to teach a babies one word, you got to repeat more than 100 times of that same word over and over and over and over. Why are we talking about Jesus Christ all the time? Many times we assume that person knows gospel. That person understands the gospel. Many times we believe in ourselves. We know what he's preaching on a purpose. But you know what? It needs to be repeated in your life 24-7. That's how it becomes imprinted in us. When Jesus is repeated and Christ is repeated, finally when Christ is imprinted in us deeper and deeper, that's when this Christ is kicked out all the other imprints of root in nature. When this Christ is rooted in us more and more and deeper, that's when it will kick out Genesis chapter 3. It will kick out Genesis chapter 6. It will kick out Genesis chapter 11. Those who are in the nature of Genesis chapter 3, 6, 11 are coming to church. And what do you think they want to hear from you? Jesus is the Christ. 
mom that I met this Wednesday, she told me she was baptized. She told me she's been to church. But you know what? She's, she was ignorant of that she didn't know that Jesus is a Christ. So next week I will meet, I will tell her Jesus is the Christ. The next week I will meet, I will tell her Jesus is a Christ. The next week, the next week, the next week, may I proclaim only one content. Sometimes even in church, we do counselings. And we do speak of some other answers. Now that we are given so many talents and knowledge and power, because we are now experienced person, as a young adult, as a grown-up people, do we speak Jesus Christ? Aren't we missing the one content that should be proclaimed every single hour and every single second? The world... Through education, forever your life are imprinting one thing to your life. You are precious. You are God. You can do everything. You're more than anybody. You could be happy if you can find yourself. They're teaching you since you're born until you die. When they're teaching the same content of Satan to you 24-7, why not we as a church proclaim the same contents? That will conquer and overcome the content of the Satan. Jesus Christ needs to be repeated in our 24-7. I had a meal on Friday with a, one of our congregations. And we went to Italian uh, restaurant. And we both, both of our family realized we don't really like Italian. But we prefer to have Korean food. So as we have spaghetti and um, linguine. And um, grilled, grilled um, uh, shrimp, or shrimp a co cocktail shrimp, shrimp, and all this food that I'm not really familiar with, and they were not familiar with too. And as we eat, we were talking about, okay, next time we should go eat bosam, and next time we should eat all this Korean food, and we realize, oh, maybe we don't really like Italian food, <laughs> but we really want weird. Desperate for Korean food. How many times do you eat Korean food as Korean? Right? And are you getting bored of it? You're not Korean then. <laughs> I'm dying for Korean food 24-7. And I'm Korean. If anyone says, oh, that's too, too boring. Why are you eating Korean, Korean food all the time? Because I'm Korean. Why do we hear Christ all the time? Because we're Christian. I mean... Why do we proclaim Christ again? Because we're Christian. If anyone is invited to my house, I will provide them Korean food. Right? When I raised a dog, I gave him Korean food. I made soup with Korean rice and gave it to my dog. He knows he's in a Korean house. He can bark at me, why are you only providing me Korean food? Because you're in Korean house. Why do we proclaim Christ alone? Why are we fed Christ again and again? Why does Pastor Shin talk about the same thing again and again? If you want to hear different things, go some other places. You are here to hear Christ alone. And why not he proclaim Christ alone to you? You are invited to Christian organization. You're invited to Christ. So why not Christ to proclaim more and more and Christ to be rooted in you more and more and deeper and deeper? Acts chapter 18. Four to five. I want to read five. It says, when Silas and Timothy arrived from the, uh, Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word testifying to the Jew that the Christ was Jesus. What else do you want to hear from church, from Bible? What kind of food did we have for our lunch? Korean food. Why? We are Korean. Why are we giving you lunch of Christ, breakfast of Christ, dinner of Christ? Why are we always giving the same meal? Because we are Christians. Aren't this our identity? Right? What else do you think they're coming to you for? 
whenever I'm meeting people, they're ask they're asking me now. This Koreans, I think their reputation of Korean is going up and up because of culture or things, whatever. They're like, do you know kimchi? I'm like, always. I like kimchi. And whenever they're like, can I visit your house one day? I'm like, why do you think they want to ask? They're asking, can I visit your house? Do you think they want to visit my house to taste the Italian food or Japanese food? Why didn't they want to come my house, come to my house and eat dinner with us? They want to taste Korean food. Why do you think people come to church? They want to hear Christ. They'll wonder if you speak of something else from now on. You know, we can teach our kids how to be successful, how to study, how to get good grades on SAT. Yet, why are we compelled to speak of only Christ again? Because all the other content they hear from outside of church. So what are we supposed to say? What's the reason, the heavenly mandate, that what's that one calling that we're called for? We're called to proclaim Jesus is a Christ. So through your life, people will see Christ through you. Amen. They will not taste anything else from your body. They will taste Christ through your life. And that is, as a conclusion of today's message, Acts chapter 9, 13. God is commanding Ananias, go Paul, go to Paul, that he's prepared soul. But what did he say? Ananias answered, but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. What does he know? He knows about Paul. That's why we don't share the gospel. Right? Aren't we familiar with my, fam my family? Aren't we familiar with my people around me? Aren't we familiar with my work? And are we the one already have the prejudice? Oh, she's not going to hear this. She doesn't look she's going to be interested. Oh, it's her financial problem. May not be the right time. Oh, it's her, his, his business. That's a problem. So might not be a great time. Because we know them, we put our faith in our knowledge, yet we don't get to hear God. But what did Ananias said? After saying this, he still went to Paul, proclaim what he was compelled to proclaim. And Paul came to meet this written Messiah as his living Jesus. This is our heavenly mandate. Sometimes it's a little uncomfortable to share the gospel. We understand that. But why do we do it? Because it's my heavenly mandate. Sometimes I'm bothered to do it. But why do we do this? Because it's my commission. Why do we do this? Because I'm called for that. This is the reason for my life. We follow the word. Obeying the word. Because he's my master. He's my living Jesus. So throughout this week. Really pray that. Lord resurrect the true prayer in my life. Resurrect the correct word in my life. Resurrect the evangelism. Look at Paul. After he met Jesus, what did he do? He was not questioning himself whether should I share this or not. He was awaited Messiah that he, 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 he was awaited Messiah that he was waiting for entire his life. Evangelism taking place. Lord, resurrect the evangelism that I've lost. That I'm missing right now. Resurrect the worship that has become religious to me. Resurrect Jesus, who's sleeping in my heart. Wake up, Jesus, work in my life. Jesus, wake up, answer my prayer. Jesus, wake up, I want to save souls. Jesus, wake up, restore true worship in my life. Wake up. I want you to be my living Jesus and my living Christ. So throughout the week, I really pray we may experience Jesus who's living, Jesus who's resurrected, and Jesus who's in you. And throughout the week, may you not be confused of your identity as a child of God. Do not let anyone deceive you. You are a student or you are an employee. 
Do not let them deceive you. Put your priority on your work instead of your identity as a child of God. We are first the children of God, the evangelists. And as a children of God, we are asked to carry my work and my, input, my profession for the kingdom of God. Let us not be confused of who he is and who we are. Let's have a time of prayer and praise. <laughs> resurrect the written word as my living Jesus in my heart although I cannot change myself although I cannot help others or myself you can you can help me you can change me you can change the world Lord, because of my knowledge, my previous knowledge or my prejudice, many times we are reluctant to bring your gospel. Although people are invited to my life, although they are brought to us, sometimes we do not share this. But Lord, let us really enjoy Christ first, this living Christ. And really wake, I really want you to be wake up. Do not sleep in my life anymore. Father, we as Christian, we as children of God, let us share the one content that is given to us. Jesus is the Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of the living. Like a lighted path before me. Like a lighted path before me. Is the name of Jesus to me when my life was full of darkness he came to me his name like a lamp lies my way like a ray of hope the name of Jesus to me when my dreams were crushed and broken he came to me his name has given hope to me Jesus to me. It's the name of Jesus to me. When my life was full of darkness, he came he to me. Came to me. His name like a lamp lies my way. Like a ray of hope. Like a ray of hope. Is the name of Jesus to me when my dreams were crushed and broken? He came to me, his name is given.
many times in our lives we're losing the power of God. Father, we really desire that you become the living and power and active in our lives. Throughout our lives, we pray that you may be exalted and praised forever and forevermore. What's the one content that we are called to proclaim? Now the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of our Father God and indwelling guidance and working of the Holy Spirit upon the remnants who will meet Jesus like Paul man who will proclaim Jesus as Christ just like Paul has proclaimed upon the remnant upon all the believers upon the field now and forever 